with your name today. Honor and praise as we lift up our hands to the Lord. Welcome to Living the Abundant Life with Dr. Samuel Meredith. All things are upheld by the words of his power. Get ready to discover the laws that govern the kingdom of God and how those laws can be applied in your life through active faith. That is the picture of what God wants to do for you in your life. And now, Living the Abundant Life with Dr. Samuel Meredith. Once again, anytime you yield yourself to the enemy, whatever way, shape, form, or fashion, in this case, the man's hands was, was the enemy was using, was, was guiding his hand. He yielded his hands to be used so the enemy could guide him to the answers on that Ouija board. But, but the man didn't realize that the enemy had control of those same hands outside of playing with the Ouija board. He began to enter his life in other areas. It just dawned on him when he was rubbing his child's back, who's controlling this? He said, I didn't know. He said, I didn't know if I was rubbing the back or that force was rubbing my child's back. That could be a little unsettling. The point is this. Anytime you yield yourself to the enemy, anytime you yield yourself to the enemy, the enemy has a right to whatever member, however you yield yourself to guide you to enter into other fair affairs of life outside of what you're being entertained. You know, I'm minded, you know, some people, they talk about, you've heard stories about people who, uh, who yield themselves to the enemy to do fortune telling and things of that nature. And they talk about the slow progression, how it looked like it's all fun and games, but those same people, the more powerful they become, the more they are tormented many times at night. Why? Cause they yielded themselves. They're playing tricky trickery with a person's mind. So that means the enemy can play games with their minds. Whatever you yield yourself to, that is what, will have control over you. Whatever member you use, the enemy has license to come in, whatever that member was, whether it's in the soulish realm or, or you're the physical or, or your body, the enemy has a right to invade that even outside of entertainment, outside when you want to deal with it. The enemy is very tricky. Remember the word of God says the enemy only comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. So if it looks as if you're being entertained, like he's helping you, you're having fun, you better believe payback is happening. And many times payback is happening before you even know it. You just don't realize it. If you sow to the flesh, you will always reap corruption. You know, those people who use, who, who yield themselves to the enemy for fortune telling and mind reading, all that stuff. And, and, and once again, they talk about how they're tormented at night. They had no idea of playing games with the enemy. They were opening up the door for the enemy to play games with them. The young man that spoke with me, he had no idea when he was playing with the Ouija board that that, that entity was guiding his hand. He had no idea that that same entity will be messing with his hands outside of entertainment, outside of that Ouija board time. There is there are no such things as freebies with the enemy. There are no such things, even when it looked like the, you're enjoying the thrill, the enemy is invading a part of your life that you may not even be aware of it yet. The word of God tells us not to be ignorant of his devices. At least Satan takes advantage over us. Once again, many times before you even know it, the enemy has already infiltrated part of your life. Remember when I talked about, we talked about that slow progression, how he, how he makes sure that he reminds you of the thrill and because of the thrill that you commit the sin, but see, while you are committing the sin, the enemy has access, whether it's anger, whether it's you going off, cussing someone out, whether you are sleeping around with individuals, you don't understand the enemy has access. You know, um, sometimes you hear stories about people who are addicted to pornography so much to the point where they can only be aroused, if you will, if they're watching pornography. They no longer have the ability to 
uh, to be aroused naturally with the opposite sex. Why? Because they've yielded themselves so much to that where that's the only way they yielded their members there. And unfortunately, once again, the enemy has access to them, to their minds and their thinking. Whatever you yield yourself to, it will have dominion over you. And whatever you use, whether it's the mental or anything physical, the enemy will have access to that. Remember, once again, if you sow to the flesh, you will reap corruption. You will reap corruption. There are no such things as freebies when you plan footsies with the enemy. He's always going to invade some part of your life. Remember, once again, the enemy only comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. He never comes so you can have a good time and a good time only. Remember, death is is the end result. And that's what the enemy wants. In fact, that's the only thing that enemy can give you because he is death. He has no life in him. He just sprinkles death with the thrill of whatever it is. You know, you can be, uh, uh, enjoy that raspberry covered double dip fudge Twinkie. You can enjoy eating that, that Twinkie, uh, and it feels so good. It tastes so good. But, you know, if you keep on, keep on, keep on, you know what? You become addicted. But once again, before you realize it, you, you may think you will walk away anytime you want. If you're if you enjoy the thrill too much. Can I tell you something? Many times you're already addicted before you before you see any form of death. The enemy is a master. He's a deceiver. You know, the enemy doesn't have a, a, a problem with calling his imps off you for a little bit. So it looks like you're enjoy, you can enjoy it a little longer. But what you don't understand is you're becoming a slave to it. The more that you give in, the less control that you have. And next thing you know, the enemy is after your will. He's after your will. You may. Now, when I say this many times, people think that. If the person, if the enemy invades a person's will, many times they think the person is demon possessed. No, that's not true. When you begin to yield yourself after some period of time, you will be able, you, the enemy will begin to move upon you and you begin to do things before you know it, before you realize what you have done. Have you ever met someone and they told you, or you perhaps you've seen it, they cut somebody out before they realized what they had done. The enemy has invaded their will. The word of God says how the enemy takes us captive. He'll take you captive at his will if you yield your members to him. Some people that may have some type of anger issue, they will, they will just hit a person before they realize that they've done it. They didn't want to cuss the person out. They didn't want to hit the person, but they did it before they realized they had done it. Why? Because they yielded themselves so much to the enemy that temporarily they were out of their mind. They were insane temporarily, temporary insanity where they were no longer in control of their will. Why? Because they have yielded their members to the enemy so long that the enemy can take them captive at his will. He can, he can bounce back and forth. And before they know it, they've yielded and they've embarrassed themselves. They hurt some people. You know, you can be married and you've asked your spouse to forgive you because you've been messing up. You committed adultery, what have you, whatever. And you know, when you, if you yield yourself to that for a long period of time, you can be sincere to your spouse, but if you've yielded yourself and you're not constant in a flow being led by the spirit of God, but you're led by your flesh, you know, the, the spirit of God will be knocking on the door. Hey, don't talk to that person. Don't talk to that person. You know, you're attracted to the person. The next thing you know, you know what? The damage would already been done when you realize you wake up and realize what you have done. Then you got to explain, what am I going to tell my spouse? Temporarily, you are in a trance. You yielded yourself. 
The word of God says, whatever you yield yourself to, that's the thing or whom or the entity or whatever has dominion over you. Whatever you yield yourself to. There are no such thing, once again, as freebies. No, you never play, you can never play footsies with the enemy, and that's it. It's just, it's not possible. If you should fall in sin, repent and don't go back. Repent and don't go back. Do not allow the enemy to remind you of the thrill of it, because that's what he's going to do to get you back. Look how it felt. Look how it felt. Did you enjoy that rush, that feeling when you committed the sin? Remember, there's always some type of feeling associated with the sin. Now, we talked about sin that leads to death. We didn't talk much about death, but we want to talk about that process. We want to talk about what goes on in the mind and how the enemy plays tricks to have you believe that you're in control and you can walk away anytime you want, but it's simply not true. We wanted to unveil the plans and the traps of the enemy and the realities. Once again, many times you are addicted, you're trapped, and you don't even know it because the only thing you're enjoying is the thrill of it. But the word of God says the wages of sin is death. Now, let's move on. Sin that leads to Death. But then it says obedience that leads to righteousness. When you yield yourself to the Holy Spirit, you knowing all that you know to do what's right over a period of time, you know what? The Holy Spirit has access to you. When you over long periods of time, when you yield yourself, the Holy Spirit will speak to you. Can I share something with you? Sometimes beyond your own will. I know I've said some things I know it was nothing but God's talking, speaking through me. I know they didn't come from me. I knew it was God. You know, I'm reminded of this, this man of God. He, get, he gives his testimony. He said he was preaching one day and in the middle of his message, he was at a guest church. He said that the, the, there was a, two couples on the front row and out of his mouth came, you have been committing adultery You've been sleeping with this man's wife and this man has been sleeping with your wife. And I'm unsure if they knew it, but they, there's some type of wife uh, swap. Now, why did the what? Why did he do that? Because he yielded himself so long in obedience to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was able to speak through him. Although in the natural, he didn't want to do it. He said I, he said he couldn't believe that he said that. But it was the Holy Spirit. Now, why did the Holy Spirit do this? Because, you know, God is not the one that likes to embarrass you. He'll give you time after time. But this was a situation where he wanted them to repent. Why? Before destruction came. Before destruction came. You know, it is better to be publicly embarrassed than your life to be destroyed. It is better. Now, that's tough to say. Because it don't feel good when you are embarrassed. It is better to be humiliated publicly than for you to be your life to be destroyed by it. So the Lord Jesus Christ brought correction through that man of God. And they repented, both couples repented right then and there. What's the point here? The man didn't want to say that. He did not want to say that. But because he yielded his members and obeying the Holy Spirit for long periods of time, the Holy Spirit was able to speak through him. Now, please, I know there are some people that say, you know, when the, when the Holy Spirit got on me, I can't control myself. I'm not talking about that because, yeah, you can't control yourself. I'm talking about those who live a lifestyle of obedience, a lifestyle of obedience. You know, when you are in service to God, you, you, you serve God with all of your mind, your soul, your will, your strength and whatever capacity in which you are serving God. If you do that over a long period of time, the Lord will get in that. 
He'll do things for you beyond your natural ability. I'm reminded of David and his mighty men. Now we know it starts out, David, these 400 discontented uh, men that were in debt and distress. These, these men met David in the cave of Adullam. These 400 men eventually became 600 men. And through years of David training them and them sitting under the anointing of David and them also obeying David, the anointing of God came on them. But the word of God talks about 30 uh, men that were special. These were David's elite fighting men. But even within those uh, 30 uh, men, there were three that was on a whole different level. The word of God talks about one man. He killed 800 men in one battle. Now, how did this happen? Once again, when you're obedient to, to that anointing of God, in this case, following David's rulership, obeying David, but being able to be used by God to defeat the enemies of Israel over years, God can supernaturally do things beyond that person's ability. He'll do the same thing for you. The scripture talks about how some of these men, they killed 300 men. Some of these men went in the enemy's camp. When everyone in, 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 in the army abandoned them, they stayed there and fought and killed all the Philistines. There's another story of a, a man who killed a lion with his bare hand, killed the lion. And there were others who killed giants just like David did. The point is this. When you yield yourself under the anointing of God to be used by God, and you're in the right calling, supernatural things will happen to you. There are no, there's no such thing as, as a person yielding themselves to God on a consistent basis for a long period of time and the glory and the anointing of God is not on them. The anointing of God will always fall on you for service when you yield yourself for service, especially on long periods of time. These men did this for years. That anointing was strong on them. If you notice, the more that you walk with God in obedience, that anointing to do whatever you're called to do, it increases. It could be, you, you could just be teaching the little babies during, during Sunday school. But if, if you're at the right position and you have the right heart and you're doing this faithfully from a pure heart, that anointing to teach them will increase every year, every year. And you'll find yourself, you'll be able to connect to them more every year that anointing increases. You cannot walk with my God and that anointing not increase. That anointing for service increase on you. It will increase. It will increase. You know, I'm reminded of uh, sometimes I see it with older people. And I mean older people. I mean, you know, like people in their 80s, late 70s or 80s and even 90s. Every now and then, not often, but every now and then, I'll see someone that's old, but they wear this anointing on them. Now, please don't misunderstand me. Anytime you're in your 70s and 80s and 90s, oh, you deserve honor. And many times you will be honored. Why? Because you're old. When you've lived that long, there's a certain uh, uh, there's wisdom associated with you. You have this wisdom because you've lived life. You've seen it. And so you have a bit of wisdom beyond most people. Why? Because you live life and you've seen things. But you know what I'm referring to? I'm not talking about that. Those individuals who lived a life of obedience, who've walked with God for years, for decades, some, th they have this anointing on them you don't even have to know them. You don't even have to know their reputation, but you recognize it when you see it. These older people have this anointing. It draws people to them. It's like th the glory of God is on them. It's like a crown of glory that sits on them. Why? Because they lived a life of obedience. You all listen, I'm not an old person, but when I become old, I want that anointing. 
See, there are some anointings you ain't got to talk about. You don't have to brag on. It just rests on you. You can be, they can drop you in another state that you've never been into. You've never been to. You can walk in a place that people are drawn to you because of that anointing. The glory of God is on you. Why? Because it rests on you because you yielded your members to almighty God to, to, to be led by the spirit of God at all times for long seasons of time. There's a glory on those individuals. Why? Because they yielded themselves. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about one particular individual that I know that's in this city. This man is in his 80s. Do you know this man cuts his grass and he has a push mower? He trims his hedges and he has the, the, those, those trimmers like the scissors, not the electronic kind. And he's in his 80s. He has his health and strength and is in his right mind. But if you talk to this person, this guy is full of God. He lived for God for decades and decades and raised his family, raised his children. And now that anointing rests on him. It rests on him. Why? Because he yielded his body. He yielded himself. He yielded his soul. He yielded his mind. He yielded his will. You know, sometimes these people may not have all the theology uh, uh, depth that perhaps younger people have, but you know what? Their faith in God is so strong. They can, they can believe just this much, if you will, but it is so in depth. It's so deep because they've seen God work in ways that you cannot explain. Yeah. Why? Because they've walked a life of obedience to them. Obedience that leads to righteousness. The word of God talks about this crown of life. This anointing is on them. You know, I reminded of Moses, the word of God talks about because he, he spent some days with God, 40 days and 40 nights. When he came out of the presence of God, he had to wear a, a veil because there was his face literally shown, uh, reflected the glory of God. So are these older individuals that I'm referring to. You know, I'm reminded of this other uh, uh, man of God. Uh, now, this particular individual is a preacher. And what I'm talking about is not exclusive to the pulpit only. I need to make that statement. Is anyone who walked in the calling of God, who walked in obedience to God for a long periods of time, they wear this glory that they don't have to talk about. You can see it on them. It's not, in a sense, tangible where it's a glow, but you see and you recognize the spirit of God on them. Getting back to my story, this, this, this particular older gentleman, he's probably in his mid-80s. Now, years ago, this man had a wealth of wisdom on him that's just, that was just unheard of. He just carried this fatherly anointing on him where everybody seeks his wisdom. If you know about him, if you know who I'm referring to, the guy just was just, why he just had a wisdom, but he was faithful to his family. You, that type of anointing, it rested on him because of his faithfulness to God and the faithfulness to his family. Living a life of obedience. You know, there are some times when he wasn't even the leader, but when he said something, everyone listened and everyone did exactly what he told them to do. He was a very nice man. He wasn't forceful, anything like that. But when someone carries the arm of the hand of God with them, it doesn't matter. You're going to do what they say do. Because the Holy Spirit is backing them up. So when they say something, the Holy Spirit will strike your heart. You know what? Let me be quiet. They don't have to say much. The Holy Spirit is working for them. What's happening? The arm of the Lord is upon them. When they speak, the Holy Spirit works. You know, this anointing, this obedience that leads to righteousness is because they yielded themselves to the Holy Spirit for long periods of time. Who are you yielding yourself to? What are you yielding yourself to? To. Do you want to be an instrument of righteousness or will you embark upon sin that will lead to death? Remember, the enemy loves to disguise sin with something called the thrill. 
Every sin has a thrill that's associated with it. The enemy to get you hooked will remind you of the feeling, the thrill. It's intoxicating. To the point where eventually you'll be in bondage. But remember, many times you're in bondage already. You have no idea why, because you're hooked to the thrill. You're intoxicated by the thrill. You hunger after the thrill. So many times before there's any signs of death, you're once again, you're already hooked. You're already a slave to it. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, what are you yielding yourself to? Whatever you yield yourself to, whether it's the sin that leads to death or obedience that leads to righteousness, the Holy Spirit, whatever you yield yourself, that will have dominion over you. It will talk through you. Your actions will be governed by it. It will come out. You cannot hide it. You cannot hide it. Whether it is sin that leads to death or obedience that leads to righteousness, you cannot hide it. It's going to come out. So we choose now. What do you want to be known for? Do you want to be known for, because eventually, even if you're doing things hidden, there's a season of grace, but you know what? You have to make a choice. And let me say this, the Holy Spirit will help you. The word of God says, now unto him who is able to keep me from falling and present me faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. The Lord will get you out of it. But when the Lord take your hand and pull you out of it, you got to remain out of it. Can I share something with you? It won't even be a struggle. Why? Because you're going to yield yourself in the face of God. You'll be in the presence of God. When you're in the presence of God, you're not sin conscious. Your conscience is focused on the life of God, God's holy word, the presence of God like Moses was when he was on the mountain. So yield yourself to that of righteousness. Obedience that, live, that leads to righteousness and live the abundant life. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. We bless your name today, honor and praise as we lift up our hands to the Lord. This has been Living the Abundant Life with Dr. Samuel Meredith. We pray that you continue to gain more insight into God's Word as Dr. Meredith shares the good news of the laws that govern the kingdom and how those laws can be applied through the active faith in your life. Remember to tune in to KJBN 1050 AM every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 AM as Dr. Meredith encourages us with Bible-based laws that will help us to prosper in every aspect of our lives. Please send all correspondence to the address on the screen. And we thank you for watching Living the Abundant Life with Pastor Samuel Meredith. We magnify your name, we glorify, and we lift up our hands to the Lord.